Good morning, folks. Let's start with last night's news. We set the Global Earthquake Condition Index at C+, but with a localized elevated watch of B, from New Zealand to Micronesia, based on the six-pointer yesterday in New Zealand and the multiple fives to the north. Significant earthquake indeed struck the center of that watch zone less than two hours later, but USGS did a major downgrade as most seismologists who read the readings claim this was an excess of 6.0. The initial readings of 6.5 are what prompted the Twitter alert last night. Luckily, there was no damage, and we move on to something happy via NASA's Earth Observatory. England now has the world's largest offshore wind farm. Great to see things like that. Photos and article are quite nice. You are looking at a nearby G-type star, HD 19467, and the glare was spectrally diminished until a companion was revealed, a brown dwarf. Our first imaging of such a companion object, and this is our top recommendation today. The paper PDF is linked for you in the About tab below the video. Now before we go around the world, let's take a look at a new resource, OpenGeoSci. It's a new internet program, it's free, it lets you sort important and fascinating data points about events and a multitude of specialty studies in the fields. You can further break down the criterion by the Journal of Publication. I might suggest marching through their extraterrestrial geology markers. Just have some fun with it. Two days ago I said in my head that the size of this low would preclude major cold from entering the storm situation in Europe. Whoops. That low had some sort of disagreement with itself, had to let part of itself go. Anyway, the doorway allowed major cold to come south and fill the area of the northern and eastern Europe along with western Russia. You see the RSOE alert for the cold there. Now, while that unfolds, the lows at the party are still dancing. The non-cold related storm events continue as the flooding has shifted from France yesterday down to Italy today. Australia and New Zealand? Boy, June got out of there in a hurry, but that doesn't clear the low pressure significance from the board here as Northwest Australia still watching this one system and while a new low heads to the west coast of the South Island and New Zealand. Look at the moisture atop Australia now. Wow. In the west? We see those lows in the Pacific refusing to budge. They are far enough off the coast though for lesser effects only. Could see major snow and a little wind U-shape in the eastern states. See the cold coming back a bit after a slightly warmer day for most of the Midwest yesterday. Solar wind. Last night we questioned the genesis of these jolts and this morning I'm left with little better to go on. Could actually be the sector boundary of the current solar wind sheet mentioned on spaceweather.com but in any event it is minor so far. Sensitive metrics tell me to keep the KP pulled up all day though. Another continuation from last night's news, the eruption off the western limb was so very, very wide, Earth actually has a minuscule chance of taking a glancing blow from the ejecta. Won't be a worry, but it is indicative of the lower heliospheric pressure in this solar shutdown we're currently witnessing. Sunspots are numerous, but the complexity is less so. The blue-red mix to the southernmost tail is likely the top watch of all the spots. If you're new here, head to the website for the background videos. They will get you caught up on the two and a half years of this stuff faster than you'd believe. For the vets, shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone. 